Hello everyone. Today I will be working on a 1926 Model T. The goal here is to start restoring it. Yesterday I have started taking the floors out. Right now I'm in the process of grinding off rivets. Now this car is all original. It was found sitting in a barn and the engine does turn over but it hasn't run since probably the 50s. It's not stuck, but the valves are stuck. That's what it looks like. It's in good shape. I'll show you the other side. Still has, I don't think these are the original headlights, but it has those. The wheels are good. This is the trunk. Pretty big space. It does have a six volt starter on it. So that's where the battery would have gone. It does have some little rust issues it does have the original tail light come over here i'll show you this side of the engine that's what this side of the engine looks like it's got a water pump a generator the coil box is right here this is the horn Fuel tank is right here. It's already filled it up. Then on the inside, you have a horn button. One of these is timing, and one of these is a throttle. The throttle's up here. And then we do have a key for it and a choke. And then down here, you can see the bottom of the gas tank. This car is, like I said, very original. It has a lot of the original paint left. Now there is currently no roof, but originally they had a canvas top. You have a windshield wiper here that's stuck, but it's a hand operated windshield wiper. All the doors open and close nicely. I think glass is original, but that will be replaced. Pretty nice for a 94 year old car. So today I'll be taking out the rest of this floor, grinding off all these rivets, pounding them out, and we'll go from there. Hello everyone. I have made some progress on the 1926 Model T since the last time. I have taken out these two floor pans and they're just riveted in here. I took a grinder and a pin punch and punched out the rivets and ground the tops off. I'll be taking out the rear floor next. But I came over here to this door and there was glass in here. Part of it was broken, but I had to get it loose. This little runner in here was broken, but since the glass was broken, I was able to pull it off out the top. But on the other side, the glass is still there. So I'll show you what's going on over there. I figured out how to get this glass out. You have to take off these trim pieces in the top and on the side. But then next I'll have to take off this trim piece for the window sills. And I should be able to pull the window out. Here they are laying on the floor. This is what they look like. They have little staples that held them in. So that's what I have going on there. And after I get the windows out, I'll probably go back to the floors and I'll get the rear window out and the side windows. The tool I use now to get the rivets off is this. That works very well. It takes about two minutes to get a rivet off. And to clean up the frame right here, you can see I cleaned it up. I used this machine, this vibrating needle machine, which works very well. One kind of cool thing is here, get this piece. See this original 1926 black paint? This is a piece that would go here on top of the 
window and now we can see what the paint color was. We know it was black because that's the only thing Henry Ford wanted to paint his cars. Here's a window glass right here. Probably end up taking that in somewhere to get it cut. Get a new one made and we'll continue progress with this. Now the next plan is to take that floor out and then we have these body bolts here. There's six and we will undo those, take the body off and set the body off outside and then we'll start on the chassis taking that apart, take the, pull the engine and transmission out and continue the restoration from there. Hello everyone, we're working on the Model T still. I've made some progress since the last time I worked on it. I pulled out the driver's side window over there. Now the easiest way to get this out is to take these window seals and they're just hooked up on top. They go up in here and they just hook in there and you just pull up on them a little bit, unhook them, they come down then you can pull the window right out after you release it from that little roller. I'll show you on the other side. That little roller. And I didn't, I took this loose a little bit. So yeah, this, this side's the same thing. But up here, to get the top window sill out, you have to take this piece out and it's held in with three little brass screws. And then these little holes here, right there, you have to unscrew it. There's nuts in there, and they, they're supposed to stay in there, but not all of them did. And you just unscrew that. And I also took out these side windows. Now to get these out, I just took this razor blade and trimmed around the window and very carefully took it out. And the only thing that holds it in is that, and this side has it. There's a piece of metal right there that holds the window in and the trim is the only thing else that holds it in. Now the next thing I'll do is take out this back window, undo this trim, all these little screws. Then I'll undo the front window, take that out. Now the next thing is taking these fenders off. They're just bolted on. There's some bolts down there. Some over here, all in, bolted from here. Nuts are on the inside. So that's what I've been up to so far. So I'll get these two rear fenders off. Then I'll probably go after the running boards next on both sides. Then after that, maybe this mud guard. I'm not sure. We'll have to see how it looks. I've been spraying these bolts with penetrating oil to get them out. That stuff works pretty good. I haven't really had any problems getting bolts out of this car yet since it's been so well taken care of in the past. Even the front wheel bearings are still good. Pretty good stuff for an old car that's been sitting for so many years. Okay, I got some more work on the, done on the Model T. I took the running board off. It's held on by four bolts. There's a piece of wood on the bottom that holds them in. Carriage bolts. It's awful rusty along the side. There's kind of a little lip for it to collect rust. There's a small little rust hole I'll have to fix. After I took that off, I took the rear fender off. Before you take the rear fender off, you have to get to these two bolts here. But in order to get to those, you have to take off this bumper bracket, which all those bolts were stuck. So I had to, I used the air ratchet to get it off. It came right out or broke off. There's these two bolts and there's two short ones here, another long one here, and it was bolted in down there and came right out. Now, I'm going to start the same thing on the driver's side. 
A lot has changed on the Model T since I've worked on it. My dad and my brother have been working on it while I've been at work and it looks like they have got a lot done. It's important to keep in mind that this is a family project. So it looks like they got all the cowling off, the front fenders. I took the running boards off a few days ago. They got one door off. This is what the engine looks like out in the open. It's all original. Over here we have all the stuff laying on the floor. Gas tank, radiator, other fender. The bolts, some bolts have been difficult to take out, but not all. But so far everything is going well. The goal here is to get this body off real soon. Then we can pull the engine out and go through that. Then all we have left is a chassis then it's ordering parts and cleaning them up and painting from there. We got all the glass out now. All the floors are out. This thing is moving right along. The nice messy workbench over here. Looks like everyone's been busy. <laughs> my dad and my brother have been very busy on the Model T the past couple days, as you can see. We got the body off last night. It was a family effort. Remember, this is a family project. We used a loader to lift it off the back and back it out that back door. And we, my brother and I lifted it from the front. It's held on by these bolts here that were here. There's brackets up here, which are broken on both sides, as you can see. Looks like they've been broken for a while. But we'll find new ones or we will weld what we have. Right now we're getting ready to take the engine out. There's a bolt there that had to come out, bolt here. And these bolts back here. This is a transmission case. Now to get this separated, we just have to take this plate off and there's what you'd call nowadays a U-joint in there. And there's just a cap up here, up front that holds the engine in. And that's about it that holds the engine in. It's, this looks a little corroded. Now what's interesting about these cars, they're kind of like a tractor engine like you'd find in a Ford tractor, sort of. The transmission pan and the oil pan are one piece, but this oil pan underneath has a, an oil pan cover that's held in by bolts that you'd have to take off too. So we have that. And the body is sitting outside on a tarp all the other body panels are under a tarp too, to keep them safe. And we'll work on them later. Right now we'll get the engine out and start work on the suspension and start sandblasting and cleaning things up and ordering lots and lots of parts. And we'll keep this project moving along. Everything here looks pretty nice. We'll reuse these wheels. We're going to reuse most everything on this car. We'll have to Replaced a few nuts and bolts here and there. And this is the starter button, if no one knows that. Now, these cars had cool grease caps. What you do is you'd fill this cap full of grease, and whenever you need more grease, you turn it in a little bit, and you'd put some more grease in the engine. And this engine came with a water pump. That's what this is here, and it has another grease cap. And these uh, kingpin, kingpin bushings are pretty loose, as you can see. Here, let me... Yeah, so those are going to be replaced. The wheel bearings sound pretty good in them. And right here, there's bushings here that kind of get worn out, as you can see. They have little oil caps. They won't open, they're stuck. But that's how you oil those. This king bushing here, I'll see. Yeah, that one's pretty loose too. We're gonna be replacing all this stuff though. And these leaf spring shackles will get replaced. They'll get replaced. It's all gonna be restored and looking pretty nice before we know it. It's a pretty nice original car. Well, someone put a nail in here, but didn't have a cotter pin. That's okay though. That's what farmers did. 
You don't need cotter pin sets when you have nails laying around the shop. <laughs> this has the starter on it, so this is where the six volt battery would sit. And the battery cables would run up to the front. This is the starter right here. We'll rebuild that ourselves. And the horn goes right here. And the coil boxes would go inside here. That's where they would sit. That's what gives the power to these spark plugs here. So you could hand crank it or use the starter. Here's the generator right here. Keep the battery topped off. This would be the oil cap. The timer is up front. I'll talk about timing and getting to the engine stuff in a different video. We have th three champion spark plugs and one Ward spark plug. Now these will all get replaced, but I'm a, I collect spark plugs, so they'll go in the collection. <laughs> we'll get a new belt, though maybe this one could get reused. <laughs> they also, you could get uh, patch kits back in the day, as you can see here. It's like fixing a baler. So that was kind of interesting. You didn't buy a new belt back then, you fixed what you had. Nice made in the USA right here by Ford. The drive shaft is enclosed in this, I guess, pipe here. And it goes back to your standard differential. Not a lot has changed. It looks pretty similar to a new car, really. And these are the brake rods. We'll reuse those. Like I said, we'll reuse lots of stuff in this car. It's all good. I mean, even this wheel right here, if you can see, has original paint on it still. Even the brake drums right here have original paint. Everything still turns nicely. We'll check out the differential, see if it needs any attention, but I think it'll be okay. All this works. Pretty cool stuff. So there you are. Here's some of the bumpers right here. This is the front bumper. I mean, some of these parts are in such good condition. Look at this battery cable. That battery cable looks like it's almost brand new. And it's from 1926. We're gonna probably get a new one, but I mean, you could use that one if you wanted to. Got a nice organized mess going on here. Here's the, I can get, it, get it out of here. The instrument panel here. You have battery, dim, off, on, and magneto. You could start it on the battery using the battery and switch to magneto. They tended to run a little better on the magneto. You have an amp gauge here so you can check your charging. Have the headlight laying over there. For the fuel we got some more work done on the model t while i was at work my dad and my brother pulled the engine out it wasn't too difficult put a strap right through the middle just like henry ford says in his manual i took off the coil box so that you have more room all the spark plugs are loose some of these head bolts might be a little difficult to get out but we'll get them out Looks a little crusty in there, but that's to be expected. Here's this belt. You can see it's been spliced twice. Water pump still turns nice. That's good. Nothing on this engine is stuck too bad. It's, as you can see, it gets cradled in there and has motor mounts there. This is a U-joint they had back then. I had to slide it out of that. Now, one thing we have going on is this water fitting here for the water to go in the block. It's a little too corroded for us to use. And I guess 1926 and 27, they made this the style. And the other years, this was separate. But this one's together, so we'll have to find a new water inlet housing. Might be a little tricky, but we, we will find one eventually. 
So, so far the car is coming along good. We'll just have to start disassembling the front suspension, the rear suspension and start sandblasting and grinding rust off and we'll start going the other way, I guess. So you can see a lot of these leaf spring shackles are a little worn out. See how the axle, front axle is leaning a little bit back. We'll have to replace all that, but that's not so difficult. They make new parts for this Model T, so not a big issue. So, so far everything's going along well. Another thing I was gonna show you is what looks like the original engine paint. It looks like it's a dark gray, maybe. It's kind of hard to tell. Hopefully you can see it well on the camera there. Yeah, this is a very original car, as you can see. So, there will be more updates to follow with the Model T restoration.